Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. You want the latest news in the streets? Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hey, tea sippers. I hope you guys are doing good today. Happy Wednesday. So it is a lot going on and I want to talk about it. So if you guys do not know, Amber Rose is currently trending all over social media. And the reason why she's trending is because about two days ago, she spoke at the RNC, the Republican National Convention. Now, many of us are used to the old school Amber Rose. The Amber Rose who dated Kanye West, who had a baby by Wiz Khalifa, who was with AE, who's now with Cher. Um, we also remember her from putting on such events as the Slut Walk, okay? Let me go ahead and refresh y'all's memory. Get to celebrate some pussy power in 2018, the Amber Rose Slut Walk. <laughs> so, my team said, you know, we should have a moment of silence. And I said, you know, fuck that shit. I'm not gonna let him, Trump, Weinstein, uh, uh, Cosby. No. This is a day to celebrate women. All right, so you guys just saw that video of Amber Rose. She was the bastion of, you know, freedom of speech, women's rights, you know what I'm saying? Protecting women to be able to get abortions and be sluts and whores and everything else. So it looks like now that that grift has ran its course, because you know, being a slut is not cute and it's definitely not cute when you're damn near pushing 40, okay? So, you know, she nobody's booking her for clubs and shows like that. And now she's speaking at the Republican National Convention. And honestly, I really liked her speech. I was not mad at her speech. I want you guys to go ahead and watch it here and I'm gonna come back with the rest of my commentary. Hello, my name is Amber Rose. I'm a model and entrepreneur, thank you. But most importantly, I'm a mother. My whole world revolves around providing for my children, keeping them safe and giving them an opportunity for a better life. That's something that unites all American parents whether we're Republicans, Democrats, conservatives, or liberals, we all want a better country for our children. But I'm here tonight to tell you, no matter your political background, that the best chance we have to give our babies a better life is to elect Donald Trump President of the United States. Now you may be wondering why I'm up here telling you this. I'm no politician and I don't want to be. But I do care about the truth. And the truth is that the media has lied to us about Donald Trump. I know this because for a long time I believed those lies. So I'm here to set the record straight. The first person I knew who supported Donald Trump was my father. I was shocked. My entire family is racially diverse. And I believed the left-wing propaganda that Donald Trump was a racist. My father said, no, he's not, Amber. What are you talking about? And when I insisted, he said, prove it. So to prove my father wrong, I did my research and looked into all things Donald Trump. People have to do their research. I watched all the rallies, and I started meeting so many of you, his red hat wearing supporters. <laughs> I realized Donald Trump and his supporters don't care if you're black, white, gay, or straight. It's all love. And that's when it hit me. These are my people. This is where I belong. <laughs> so I let go of my fear of judgment, of being misunderstood, of getting attacked by the left, and I put the red hat on too. 
Thank you. All right, so you guys just saw what Amber Rose had to say, and social media was definitely mixed. It's very interesting because Matt Walsh from The Daily Wire, he said this. He said the RNC gives a primetime speaking slot to a pro-abortion feminist and self-proclaimed slut with a face tattoo whose who's only claim to fame is having sex with rappers. Truly an embarrassment. Not a single voter will be mobilized by this person. So that is what um, Matt Walsh had to say. But a lot of other people, you know, they thought it was refreshing to see her get up there and speak about her father and their relationship and the fact that he was in the army. I had no idea about that. So on top of that, another person who was not feeling it is MSNBC spokesperson Joy Reid. Okay, Joy Reid was definitely in her feelings, honey. So let's go ahead and play what Joy Reid had to say. So it's ironic that they were able to um, recruit this young woman who, you know, and we're, she's a, you know, she's a racially ambiguous. I don't want to say she's black because she has said she's not. So I don't want to say this black woman, this woman who is of whatever race that she has claimed. She said she's not black. But they brought somebody whose whole career is based in black culture. She would used to be on a show on BET. That's the reason most people know who she is. She dated one of the most prominent African-American rappers in the business, in the history of hip hop. So her whole culture came from black culture, even though she says she's not a black person herself. And the fact that she is now the person they're using to try to recruit young people of color and to say that this is the person who is the endorser of Donald Trump, who you should trust, when she won't even claim the culture that brought her to the table, I'm dubious that this will work. I don't know anyone who takes their political cues from Amber Rose, but just in case you do, you might want to duplicate doing your own research because she might not have done it thoroughly. I think when we look at... You know All right, so you guys just heard what um, Joy Reid had to say. So she's obviously pressed like a panini, honey. Now I'm going to say this. First and foremost, Amber Rose is not black. I don't look at her as a black woman. Her mother is from Cape Verde. And basically, her mother is racially ambiguous. Her father is white. We've talked about Amber Rose and her, you know, racially ambiguous background before, right? Um, when I see Amber Rose's baby pictures, when I see her teenage pictures, I don't associate that with blackness. To me, she looks like a white girl, um, maybe with some Italian or something in her. I don't see black in her at all. She's always been racially ambiguous. And so she replied back to Joy Reid, and this is what Amber Rose had to say. So Amber Rose says, hi, Joy Ann Reid. I've never said I wasn't black. I said I identify as biracial. I'm not going to invalidate my white father to make you feel more comfortable. Stop being a race baiter. Your president does enough race baiting for us all. So a lot of people loved her response. And then people found this clip um, where she did an interview with Peter Rosenbaum, and this is what she said. Culturally in America, you're considered black. Do, do you think is that? Do you think that's how people perceive you, and is that how you perceive yourself? I do not consider myself a black woman. Absolutely not. All right, so the clip that's going around where she's saying I don't consider myself black is like an 11-second clip, and people are trying to make it fit their narrative. If you actually go to the clip and actually watch the conversation, she's saying she does not consider herself a black woman because she considers herself biracial. She has a white father, okay? And um, I don't understand why black people fight so hard to claim biracial people, racially ambiguous people, like, does that somehow make you sleep better at night to force this girl to check a box? You, I mean, if you really look at Amber Rose uh, as, as an individual, you are clearly like a mixed race person, right? Right. However, I think culturally in America, you're considered black. Do, do you think is that do you think that's how people perceive you? And is that how you perceive yourself? I do not consider myself a black woman. Absolutely not. What do you consider yourself? Biracial. As much one thing as the other. Yeah, I mean, I saw my dad is half Irish, half Italian. I do the Italian festivals. I grew up eating very Italian food. Um, I celebrate St. Patty's Day. Um, you know, you like weird '80s rock sometimes. Right, I'm all. I'm really into '80s rock. I love Guns N' Roses. So, um, and then also like my Cape Verdean side, which I don't know that much about it, but um, you know, I try to get up on that culture also but i embrace everything that i am i don't feel like i'm more one thing than the other you just feel like you'd be doing a disservice to one side to only no nah, it's just personally personally how i feel it's not for anybody else see but ebro you're mixed you're biracial yep. but i guess it's kind of different i mean you had a black father mm -hmm. and a white mother that's correct and yet you identify probably as black yeah because i 
chose that identification based on how people responded to me. Mm. Right. So based on how I was treated, my experience, right. The black thing is very much an experience. Right. Amber's experience. She's saying she experienced a lot of culture. I went to Hebrew school. Right. And I do consider myself Jewish, but I'm black. And I believe that you can be black and still be all of those other things, because that technically is what black in America is, because when you have African descent Mm -hmm. and your people were slaves and that's how you came up. Yes, we were all mixed with Cherokee, with French, with whatever. Right. But, you know, I think race in America is different than culture, is different than ethnicity, is different than nationality, and some people bundle those things, mm-hmm. right? I checked the black box, but that's also because I was raised by a black father who was very pro-black and was like, yo, See, I check black, other. B. You check other. Now, check other. now, Ebro, he feels like he's black and, you know, he was raised culturally black and his father's black, but at the end of the day, He's not a black man. Ebro is biracial. And there's nothing wrong with that. I don't understand why people keep trying to force people who are biracial and ambiguous to forget one whole parent, one whole half of themselves, and solely check the black box. At the end of the day, people are going to treat you how you look phenotypically. So maybe with Ebro, he looks more like a light-skinned black man. So I can see how people might treat him like that. You know, like a J. Cole. J. Cole looks like a light-skinned black man. A lot of people don't know that J. Cole has a white mother. Amber Rose definitely looks ambiguous. When I look at Amber Rose, I don't see a black woman. There's nothing about her features where I'm like, oh, yeah, those features look like the same features on my face. Absolutely not. And that's okay. I think people are taking that snippet of the clip and trying to run with it. This girl has always claimed biracial because she has enough common sense to understand that in certain spaces, you don't look black. And nobody's going to see you as a black woman. But Amber definitely benefited from the black community. She definitely benefited from hip hop, you know what I'm saying, from the urban community, urban modeling and things like that. And again, just to keep it real, that's part of the perks or the benefits that biracial people have is that they can play both sides of the fence. They can go for roles where they can, you know, if they look more white, they can go for white roles. If they look more ambiguous, they can go up for those roles and they can also go up for black roles. Whereas if you're talking about a dark skinned black man or black woman, the only role that you can go up for an audition for is black. Nobody looks as dark skinned people as ambiguous. They know what you are as soon as you walk in the door. So she's definitely benefited from black culture. I think the reason why a lot of people are salty and raising hell on social media is because y'all were the same ones who propped this girl up Y'all followed her. Nobody could say nothing bad about Amber. I've always called out Amber Rose's bullshit. Y'all can go back to my old videos. I never agreed with the slut walk. I felt it was bullshit. You know what I'm saying? I've never been a big Amber Rose fan. But I feel like at the end of the day, Amber Rose has the right to grow and evolve. And if she wants to evolve from the hip hop community and evolve away from the whole Kanye West situation, and she wants to evolve out of being you know, a slut and promoting the slut walk, and now she wants to move into the political space, that is her business and that is her right. I take no offense to that because last time I checked, people have the right to decide whichever end of the spectrum they want to be on. They have the right to support whichever candidate they want to support. That is supposed to be an American right. But for some reason now, it's a bad thing. If you choose to support Trump, you're demonized. If you choose to support Joe Biden, you're demonized. And this divide is so annoying to me because I feel like at the end of the day, people have the right to side with what side they want to be with, you know? And so to try and shame her or say like, you know, you're just being used as a puppet, Again, I feel like a lot of black folks who are upset about this situation are mad because they put Amber on a pedestal and they looked at her as their, you know, racially ambiguous queen. And now she's switched up and people don't know where to place her and people feel away. And also keeping it real, I also get grifter vibes, you know, just like with um, Brittany Renner. You know, first they're proud sluts and, you know, they're fucking 40 guys and having, you know, babies by basketball players and this is a life. And if you're talking about me, you're just jealous. You know, you're just slut shaming me. Then they realize that that life is tiring. It's tiring having a bunch of bodies on you and walking around with a bunch of crazy soul ties. They don't want to know your favorite color. They don't give a shit. (laughs) So why do you want them over top of you? Mm -hmm. Again, that's come from feeling used up. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's why the used goods comments, they sting. Mm -hmm. Because you know what? There are times I felt like that. I feel like the old toy, I'm sorry, the new toy that now is 
unexciting mm -hmm. and put away in a box. So then they switch it up and they go into the feminism bag and you know, I am woman, hear me roar. And then when that doesn't work, they go red pill. And we see that now with, you know, Britney and now with Amber, you know, being more red pill, being more conservative, you know, bless their hearts, child, to each his own. But with that being said, I want to leave the conversation with you guys. How do y'all feel about this conversation with Amber Rose and her being racially ambiguous? I'm really tired of the topic. We hit on this during the whole College Hill debacle when her and Jocelyn got into it. So like I said, let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. I look forward to hearing from you guys. I want to know y'all's opinions on this entire situation. So make sure you guys leave a comment down below. Feel free to share the video. Most importantly, make sure you're still subscribed to the channel. And I'll talk to y'all later. Deuces. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us in tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity, so sell your friends and your family.